We're here today at the uh, Tokyo launch event for Cardano. It's uh, going to be a huge event. Lots of people have shown up and we're extremely excited about it. The funding of the project began in Tokyo and 95% of the funding took place in Tokyo and Osaka. So it's very correct that we return to the birthplace of Cardano. Yeah, being, being here at the event is, is good fun because uh, the team has been working on this project for a long time and it's been you know, a, long, a long road. And so it's very nice to have finally got to our release. Um, the mainnet release came out very recently. Uh, and now here at the event, we can you know, tell, tell that to everybody and, and celebrate a little bit. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to be here at, at the event. We just launched our mainnet. Uh, we have a lot of people that are very excited. Uh, they're out using the settlement layer and the cryptocurrency ADA. And they, it's extremely fast. It's two years in the making. Uh, you know, IOHK joined this project very, very early on. It was in uh, early 2015. The initial design brief was, could you build a Japanese version of Ethereum? Uh, and we said, well, that's really interesting. And so we, we had a lot of conversations, a lot of discussions. And uh, after many iterations, we realized that we could create something that was an intersection of commerce, computation, and compliance. So from one side, uh, how do we improve the user experience of all cryptocurrencies? not just something like Bitcoin-esque, but actually build something where you can use it on a cell phone, it's very natural, it's very easy, key management makes sense, and it's actually a better experience than somebody would encounter with PayPal or a credit card and so forth. On the computation side, we wanted to iterate and evolve the Ethereum model, as well as explore adding new cryptographic techniques like multi-party computation to the system. And then on the compliance side, it's really about building bridges to the, uh, to the legacy financial system by finding convenient ways to optionally add metadata attribution and compliance to certain types of transactions when people are doing business with uh, regulated entities. Most software that we build, industry standard quality, means that we've tested it and it doesn't appear to have any bugs. But appearing to work and you know, having high assurance that something works, those are, those are quite different things. To achieve high assurance, you need a, a sound, logical argument. Why is this software correct? You, know, you need to be able to convince someone else uh, who didn't write the software. What is your sound, logical argument why your software is correct? And just saying, oh, well, we built it and we tested it, mm, that doesn't really cut it. It, it. it is actually an opportunity to apply computer science and formal methods in a, in a real situation. So I've been working with, with Haskell uh, and, and functional programming and stuff all my career, um, but at least in the commercial side of my career, um, I've never before had a project where people really wanted to apply high assurance, where they really wanted to achieve high assurance. And so that's really, actually genuinely very exciting for me. I haven't, haven't had the opportunity to uh, apply that sort of stuff previously. Uh, what am I excited about for Cardano? Well, I think the underlying technology uh, the software architecture has a lot of advantages that are, that are extremely scalable. Uh, some of the frameworks that we're building on, the, the use of functional programming languages, uh, peer review. So we're taking uh, basically uh, software standards that have exist existed for a long time, uh, but they've been absent, completely absent from the cryptocurrency industry. Uh, and so we're bringing those, uh, those hardcore standards into cryptocurrency uh, and building the next generation of, the, of blockchain software. We've got 10,000 uh, token, token buyers, uh, and that's stayed fairly static. Um, we've had a bit of activity on the exchange, and our number of followers on the Cardano uh, Stiftung have increased from just over 1,000 to just under 4,600 today. And it's increasing at roughly 100 followers every hour. Yeah, so community involvement is, uh, is a really important thing for any open source project. It doesn't have to be a cryptocurrency. If you look at where Linux started, one person doing it for fun, and uh, now it kind of rules the entire world. And so similarly, uh, every open source project has to make accommodation for making it easy for people outside of the core contributors to enter and be able to contribute in a productive way. So over the coming months, we're going to start releasing more and more assets for developers who are actually interested in joining our developers in uh, building up our code base, perhaps even doing their own things like launching their own wallets, uh, like client support, these types of things. On the other side of it, the non-developer side, uh, you know, people are advocates of cryptocurrency and they love the philosophy of the project, especially our desire to bring Cardano into the developing world. 
So we're really keen to start community outreach. Um, our Slack already has, I think, 3,500 people. It just recently started. Uh, the Facebook group is of equivalent size. And our hope is to see an order of magnitude growth in those numbers as quickly as we can. And our hope is to see things like uh, meetup groups and dedicated Twitter accounts and YouTube channels and podcasts and these types of things materialize. The idea of displacement is not new to technology. So if we're building cryptocurrency and, and blockchain technology with, uh, with a, a better base, we have uh, the potential to, um, to displace uh, basically early movers with better technology. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm very excited about the Cardano project and one of the reasons that I got involved in the first place. Uh, I'm excited uh, about the ability to have something uh, both transformative, but something that's very applicable to, uh, that, that has regulatory interface, that it has the ability uh, to build um, uh, basically with the constructs that we live in every day. So that for me, uh, I, I'm both an idealist and a realist. Uh, and so I'm, I'm happy to be working on something that I believe can, can uh, coexist with, with the frameworks that we have today, but uh, have a techno technological backbone uh, to, have, to, to, to transform the industry. In the immediate future, uh, people are going to see things just get a little bit better. So they're going to get faster, they're, uh, less bugs, uh, you know, faster syncing to the network, these types of things. And then they'll see kind of new features pop up out of nowhere and say, oh, well, that's really cool. Now I have paper wallets and so forth. And then as we move closer and closer to Shelly, that's when we're really going to start seeing dramatic changes, like, for example, opening up the staking, uh, checkpoints, uh, computation, these types of things. And all of that's coming in early in mid-2018. Well, the Foundation plans to do a number of uh, events in, in London and in Zoo, and we're also launching a new research program called Distributed Futures, and we're spending several million dollars on that, and we want to become a leading light in blockchain technology research and cryptocurrency research. So we felt because the Japanese community has always been so incredibly kind and, uh, and just passionate about this project, that it'd be really good to have a thank you event bring as many people in Tokyo as we can together and have them uh, basically uh, come and listen about where we came from, where we're going, uh, and some of the priorities the project has over the next 24 months. And also just to say thank you for the patience and uh, thank you for the support and uh, the kindness.